Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a very, let me show you, wet day. It has rained all night long. Oh well, we've got everything we wanted to see done. So now we're just gonna pop to a town. It doesn't matter if it's raining in a town because we're gonna be in the shops. So um, it is very nearly time for us to go down for breakfast. And we're going to go and have one of the lovely fry ups that we've heard about in all the reviews. Um, apparently, he does a good fry up. So, yes, it's been a lovely stay. We both slept well. It's been very nice. Very nice indeed. Right, you lovely lot. We are travelling on a very famous road at the moment called the Foss Way. And this is uh, one of the main streets or roads through Roman Britain at the time. You had Foss Way and you had. Uh, Urban Street, I believe, wasn't it? Urban Street, yeah. Urban Street. And here is one of our many, many straight roads of Fossway as we approach Stowe on the Wold. Stowe on the Wold. Apparently, it's a whole historic marketplace. It is. So they said they have three gypsy fairs here a year, was that? Three gypsy fairs a year, yeah. On Stowe on the Wold? Yep. As we were passing, these are near Chipping Norton. The Rollwright stones consist of three monuments, the Whispering Knights Burial Chamber, King's Men Stone Circle and the King's Stone Standing Stone, ranging in date from about 3500 to 1500 BC. The King's Men Stone Circle was a gathering place for Neolithic people around 4500 years ago. It is built of natural limestone boulders that were found within about 500 metres of the site. It originally formed a complete ring of stones with an entrance opposite the tallest stone marked by two portal stones. It's designed similar to the stone circles in Cumbria. Okay. So, we're gonna go check it out. It is chucking it down. Did you put some money in the pot, lover? Yeah. So they've got an honesty box yeah. here which is a pound for adults and children over seven. Free entry after dusk. Oh, there you are. Cool, look at the view. Yeah. Right, so Whispering Knights, King's Men. So this will be the King's Stone here then I take it. that. Those bits there are the kingstones, are they? Warden on site. We've got little wicker dancing people. The dancing ring. Ooh. The King's Men Stone Circle. A ceremonial site probably dating from the late Neolithic period. He's going back to the car, he's got soggy. There you go, you haven't got a raincoat, have you? No. The ring of very pitted stones are irregularly spaced around a three, 30 metre diameter circle. Some of the lichens growing on the stones are thought to be 400 to 800 years old. Rollwright is the easternmost stone circle in Britain. The stones are set in low bank, there's no ditch around it. About a third of the 70 odd stones were re erected in 1882. Antiquarian drawings and a small excavation suggest that the king or the ring of stones was originally a continuous wall of up to 105 boulders set cheek by jaw, oh, cheek by jowl, except for a narrow entrance opposite the tallest stone flanked by two portal stones. Standing just outside the ring, stone circles of a similar design occur in the English Lake District, Ireland and possibly Wales, but not thus southern or western England or Scotland. The king's men are so called from a legend about the witch who turned a king and his army into stone. The stones are uncountable. If you can count them three times, you get the same number each time and get the same number each time. You can have any wish you like. The tallest stone is said to have been taken to make a bridge over a stream. It took 24 horses to drag it down the hill. Two men were killed on the way. After it kept flipping over and the crops failed, it only took two horses to pull it back up the hill. Hmm. Should we count them? One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Is that two stones? 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, some missing, <laughs> 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Do you count that little one? 50, 51, 52, wow, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Look at me, I can count. 61, 62. 63 and an offering 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 71 i counted and what did they say there should be a and originally 105 something like that and some moles Look at that view. It's a shame it's raining. So these are the Rollwright Stones near Chipping Norton. I reckon I should have that job. I'll live in there and be the warden. Sounds like the perfect job for me. Let's go say hello to these three ladies dancing. What happens if I get in the middle of their circle? I'm not going to because it doesn't feel like it'd be a good thing to do. I just don't feel that's the right thing to do. We'll get a picture with them though. That view though is gorgeous. that corn oh wow there's a witch on there on a witch on the hat some little offerings yeah there's a witch on the top I hadn't realized there's little offerings on it Apparently, the Whispering Knights are down this way. I'm glad it's past because I've got the most ridiculous shoes on for walking around in the rain. Oh, look. Hello, snail. A lovely day to be a snail. Oh, hello, snail. Right, where are these other stones? Let's go have a look. Now this is really good because it does mean it's accessible for buggies and wheelchairs because they've got this path down. Um, it's also good for days like today when it's a bit muddy and people have come in the wrong footwear. Um, don't get too too muddy and it's not slippy because you've got this stuff here to protect your feet 
little kid come in with his multi multicoloured umbrella. It's very cute. So that's where we came in. You just walk around here and down this path. Get a wonderful view. And then down there are the whispering knights. Now, to me, they do look like statues huddled together, having a little whisper, whispering to each other. I'll read the uh, plaque in a minute. There's already somebody there at the moment, so I'll give them some space. What a place to stand, though. These rocks have seen it all, I'm sure. The Whispering Knights are the remains of an early Neolithic burial chamber, probably dating around to 38,000 BC, built by the first farming communities in the area. This type of tomb is known as a portal dolmen. Other examples occur in Cornwall, Wales and Ireland, seen from the downhill side two massive stones like door posts flank a closing slab to form a portal with a large fallen capstone to the rear. Okay, so that bit's fallen off the back. The tomb was designed to impress. Raising such massive stones using only levers and ropes was a considerable achievement. Originally, the size of the chamber would have had more uprights. There was probably a low platform or mound of stones around the back and sides of the chamber. The bones of several dismembered bodies would have been placed in the chamber. People went on depositing human bones here well into the Bronze Age. A few other burial chambers of rather similar form exist in this part of the Cotswolds, like the Horse Stone nearby at Enstone. Okay. One legend says that the stones go down to the brook in the valley to drink on New Year's Day or when the bells of Long Compton are heard. The main legend is that the stones are knights plotting against their king before a witch turned them into stone together with the king's men and the king's stone. Okay. They do look... I can see why they're called the Whispering Knights because they do look like they're huddled together having a little whisper. All huddled together. Hello Knights. So that that looks too big to be the capstone to go on the top. Surely that's no, it doesn't look very flat, does it? And those were the uprights. Or was this an upright and that one there is the capstone falling off the top, maybe? I don't know. Either way, can you imagine lifting those stones? My goodness. We'd use cranes and all sorts to do it now, but they just had ropes and pulleys. And just strength, I guess. Manpower. That one looks like it's got a bit of a face look. But he's looking at us. Doesn't look very happy, does he? Well, I suppose you wouldn't be very happy if you'd been turned to stone by a witch either. And he's facing the wrong way to enjoy the view. I bet decades and centuries are facing the wrong way when the view is so beautiful is uh, really frustrating. <laughs> I bet everyone comes here, don't they, mister? And go, God, look at the view. And you're really narked because you're going, well, I would, but I'm stuck like this for the rest of eternity. I can't see the view. I'll tell you what, I'll take a picture and I'll show you the view. Hold on, I'll do that now and then it might cheer you up a bit. I feel like you need to see the view. Right, I'm going to turn this off and show the view to the, uh, to the stone man. I'm sure you all think I'm completely off my trolley showing a stone the view but I just felt like he needed to see it because he just he looks a bit sad anyway I showed it him for like a minute so he could absorb it and he could enjoy it bye guys I don't know just felt like the right thing to do so I did it right Lee is sitting in the car because I'm the only one who had a raincoat on me. And that was by pure fluke. This is because I was going to get rid of this because it doesn't fit Kent anymore. And then I went, <laughs> the boy's bigger than me. It'll fit me. So it's in my walking bag, which is what I packed all my clothes in. Oh, what does this say? Let's turn this around. 
Okay, or stab it. Ooh, don't like the idea of stabbing it. Fortis Aura Placet or Stat. I have no idea what that means. Does it have it on the other side? No. Okay, I might have to Google that when I get home. Interesting. Right. These are the Rollwright Stones near Chipping Norton. Good on a wet day, good on a dry day. Okay, the Kingstone that I couldn't find is across the road. There it is, over there. So let's find out about the Kingstone, shall we? The Kingstone is a large standing stone probably erected to mark a Bronze Age cemetery dating to 1800-1500 BC. Sorry about the road noise. The strange shape of the king, like a seal balancing a ball in its nose, is partly the result of a 19th century drovers and visitors who chipped bits off to act as lucky charms and keep the devil at bay. To stop the stones being destroyed in this way, all the roll right stones were among the first monuments in Britain to be protected as secluded monuments. It's still a criminal offence to damage any of the stones. Excavations in the 1980s identified a previously unknown circular stone burial cairn next to the Kingstone. It had a central burial chamber and several latter human cremations or later human cremations. Another burial mound nearby contained an upturned urn with the cremated bones of a child. Some of the cremations have been marked by wooden posts. There have been many other ideas, but the Kingstone is probably a permanent memorial for the cemetery replacing the wooden grave markers. So there's the urn. The names of the Rollwright monuments are from a legend about a king who met a witch who challenged him. Seven long strides shall thou take, and if long Compton thou can't see, king of England thou shalt be. Off went the king, shouting, stick, stock, stone, as the king of England I shall be known. On his seventeenth stride, the ground rose up before him in a long mound. The witch laughed and cackled, as long Compton thou can't, can, canst not see, king of England thou shalt not be. Rise up, stick and stand, still stone, for England, or King of England, thou shalt be none. Uh, thou and thy men, whore stone shall be, and I myself an elden tree. Okay. Okay. Let's go check out the poor king who thought he could see Long Compton if he walked 17 steps. I can assure you 17 steps. He must have had big, big strides. This is more than 17 steps. And there's no way you can see Long Compton from here. Silly man. Excuse me, my nose is starting to run now. It's delightful, sorry. Right. Righty, righty, righty. Let's go check him out. There he is. Well, he's got a better view than the others. There you are. Shall we go to the top when we can see what view he's got? Maybe if he'd made it a bit higher up, he could have seen Long Crompton. Compton, sorry. Is that Long Compton down there? Possibly. I don't know. Didn't quite make it far enough, did he? Well, there's the king. Not with his knights. Or with the witches. I wouldn't have said it looks like... What did they say? A seal balancing a ball on his nose um, that's not the first thing that comes to mind <laughs> I'm not actually sure what it reminds me of to be honest anyway there you go that was the tour of the Rollwright Stones near Chipping Norton I hope you enjoyed it
Right, look at my shoes. Soggy, soggy. We can go shopping now. Oh well. So we're in Banbury. Oh, that lovely old building. Nineteen. Oh, it's got two dates: fifteen thirty-seven and nineteen seventy. It's lovely. So this is the famous Banbury Cross, set in the crossroads, which of course is now a very busy roundabout. And they've even got cock horses, look, to go with the song. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse with rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. I used to love seeing that when I was little. And there's Banbury Cross. And there is the fine lady on her white horse. She has bells on her toes, rings on her fingers. And then ride a court course to Banbury Cross. It's got the words around the outside. Rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. And over here, we've got a board of information. In the Middle Ages, three crosses stood in different locations around the town, all three. The White Cross in the West Bar, the Bread Cross near Butcher's Row and High Street, and finally the High or Market Cross in Cornhill were all destroyed by Puritans at the start of the 1600s. The Puritans dislike religious imagery and the suspicions associated with it. There are no remains of these crosses visible today, but plaques mark their likely locations. The current cross, which was erected in 1859 to celebrate the marriage of Princess Victoria, Victoria's eldest daughter, oh, Vi Princess Victoria, eldest daughter of Queen Victoria to Prince Frederick of Prussia, reaches a height of 16 metres. The carvings on the lower section of the cross display the arms of the town at different times and include the town's motto, Dominus Nobius Solet Scutum, which translates into God, Our Son and Shield. The statues of Queen Victoria, Edward the 567th and George V were added in 1914 to mark the coronation of George V. On the upper sections are coats of arms of people who have had strong connection with the town. Further information regarding the history of Banbury can be found at the Banbury Museum and Tourist Information Centre in Castle Quay Shopping Centre. The statue was funded and erected by the people of Banbury to commemorate the nursery rhyme which has made Banbury famous throughout the English-speaking world. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse with rings on her fingers and bells on her toe. She shall have music wherever she goes. This rhyme contains three essential elements, Banbury Cross, the cock horse and a fine lady upon a white horse. One explained explanation of the cock horse is the children's hobby horse and Banbury holds a hobby horse festival in the first weekend of July every year with a parade of hobby horse beasts throughout the town and hobby horse races held in People's Park. The statue of the fine lady upon a white horse now brings the rhyme to life all year round. The statue was designed by Art Cycle Limited cast in bronze and mounted on a plinth of local Haunton stone. The horse which was sculpted by Denise Dutton, Dutton is modelled on a Welsh cob the fine lady is depicted as a queen of the May and incorporates many symbols of spring. She wears a crown of 13 spring flowers, alternating daffodils and wild roses, symbolising the 13 ancient calendar months. A butterfly has landed among the flowers and a moth has settled on her hood. The bells on her feet are interpreted as both musical bells and by seven bells representing the days of the week. She drops petals from her raised left hand to bring us prosperity. The rings represent power. The frog represents metamorphosis, the cycle of nature and community. The other symbol to look for is the sun, which has been a symbol of Banbury since the 16th century. So there you go. I'm sure any British people watching this will know the song. 
I'm not sure that necessarily the Americans will have heard the song. There we go, that is another thing crossed off my list of things I wanted to see. Wisteria Loft. Look at that beautiful wisteria. That's beautiful. Right, you lovely lot. I think I'm going to end this here because I've actually filmed quite a lot from the bits and bobs that we've seen today. And um, I'm absolutely shattered. Lee's gone to go and grab some dinner. Um, we're having chicken. Fried chicken. I know. It's to make up for the bad fish and chips we had. And also, I'm working tonight, so I can't be bothered to cook. Lee can't be bothered to cook. So, um, yeah, I've done a lot of driving around today. So, him, him and Brendan have gone to get food. Kenzie is gaming. Now he's back back home he's got his game back so he's playing his game and I'm about to get in the shower and get changed because I'm working at seven till I don't know seven till something um so I want to make sure that when I get home I can just roll into bed and not worry about being stinky um also it's got quite chilly so I need to change my clothes into something a little bit warmer I think like my jeans Right, no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. We'll see what the weather's doing. And um, I do think I'm having some gaming with my sisters at some point. But whatever happens, you will be brought along whether you like it or not. <laughs> so hopefully you'll enjoy it. Anyway, I'll see you lovely lot in the morning. Thanks for watching.